computational photography is a very new term, and the boundaries of it are still somewhat undefined. But generally, it has to do with the following, which is that traditionally, what we've done in digital photography is sort of a two-step process. In the first, we have a camera that captures light and color values. And then we take that data and we take it into a processing engine, a powerful processing engine, which is the desktop, and we do more and more things with it there that the processing power on the desktop enables us to. What's really at the heart of computational photography is this concept of the camera becoming in and of itself a powerful computer. And so now, rather than just capturing light and color values, you can actually say, well, wait a minute, given the computational capabilities that I have on board, what is the information that I should be capturing in order to deliver maximum utility? Let me ask a question here. Who is familiar with the DxO's product? If I could have a show of hands. Right. So DxO's product starts to embody that kind of logic, even though it's very much in a two-step process. But it says, I can model the optical characteristics of a lens, and therefore I can, on the computer, start compensating for that. Uh, last year, we talked a lot about uh, something that we called software lenses. Again, can I have a show of hands on who's familiar with the, the term of software lenses? Quite a few of you. So that takes it a step beyond the DxO approach, which says, well, wait a minute, knowing what I can do to correct for the aberrations of the lens, why don't I actually design a lens that is optimized for the calculations that I can do? So I can produce a lens that is much simpler, that is much more cost effective, because I know how I can, how I can uh, correct for that in software. So take that a whole lot farther and think about the computational capabilities that you have in the camera and think about all the types of information that you might want to capture, you know, such as, for instance, Johnny mentioning this morning, the idea of capturing m multiple focal planes. I'm not going to talk about this further because our first speaker, Tom Maltzbender from HP, is going to give you an overview of computational photography before talking about his own area of research, which was one of the fields within that. But um, uh, again, I think this is something extremely important and that really defines sort of the next wave in imaging. Tom. So my name is Ren Ng, and I'm the chief executive of Refocus Imaging Incorporated. Uh, Refocus is a startup spun out of Stanford University to commercialize uh, a recent breakthrough in basic digital camera technology. And I'd like to tell you a bit about that today. So Tom's given you a great overview of current research in computational photography, uh, research that was really enabled by, by this transition from film to the digital sensor. And what I'd like to share with you today is some of the opportunities in the next logical step, the transition from the analog lens into a computational optics system. At Refocus Imaging, uh, we're developing a computational optics platform that we call the digital lens. The digital lens platform is based on harnessing the very high resolutions that we have in sensors today in order to capture a fundamentally uh, new kind, more powerful kind of raw image format inside the camera body. And using computation to process that will give unprecedented capabilities. So let me just show you, uh, go to, you, to some of those capabilities right away by showing you some of the pictures taken with a prototype digital lens camera. Uh, here you can see uh, our software that is uh, and a number of pictures taken with this prototype camera. Each of these is one exposure with this camera. Uh, here you can see an example. It's focused on this uh, woman in the background at a farmer's market. Uh, and the thing to notice is, of course, that the strawberries in the foreground are out of focus. They're out of the depth of field. And in a conventional camera, of course, there'll be no way to recover that detail with good fidelity. Uh, the information was just never recorded. However, with a digital lens camera, it turns out that if I move this slider here, we can computationally refocus this picture to pull uh, the detail onto the strawberries in the middle ground, uh, or even all the way onto the strawberries in the foreground. And this is all from the one shot with, uh, with a camera that operates just like a standard one. Here's a couple more examples. Here is uh, refocusing through a stack of sunflowers. By clicking at different depths, we can select what to focus at. All of these, as I was saying, is one shot, so we can even focus from example, for example, uh, trees in the background, through these birds in flight, um, and to 
uh, the, bird, uh, the, uh, the feet of this bird exiting the frame at the top. So this is really a one-shot replacement for uh, standard camera technology. Now, this has obvious benefits, of course, for the photographer, so focus after the fact, higher yield of your photographs, more creative possibilities. But there are also benefits uh, to the audience, okay, to the people looking at the photographs. At Refocus Imaging, uh, we've developed an innovative web image format that gives the end user control over the focus. So here's a web page. Uh, it's got a bunch of pictures taken at a wedding. Uh, but these photographs, uh, these pictures here, are actually interactive pictures. And you can recognize these kind of pictures by these the three refocus dots in the top right. And they provide the same functionality I showed before, except now completely in the web page. So with this slider to pull the focal plane closer and further, um, or click to you know, change from the expression on the happy couple's face to their new wedding bands, or explore the expression on the efficient's face or the bride or at the location uh, at this lake. We're focusing from this fisherman uh, to the mountains in the background, or from the camera to the photographer to the mountains in the background, really creating a picture that engages the viewer in exploring that picture in order to find out what else can I see, for example, in the individual faces of the diners in this lineup at the reception dinner. Now, of course, if you can computationally focus a picture, there's no reason that you have to just pull or push a focal plane. So I'd just like to quickly show you an example of uh, painting the focus. So here's a shot. Uh, it's taken to you know, there's two birds in this scene. And if you were to take this with a wide aperture, you have to select which bird you want to be in focus, right? Um, but the point here is that since we can computationally focus, we can just choose to make these pixels into focus. So to bring this bird uh, into clarity, and you can see the amount of detail that you can pull out by uh, computationally refocusing on the feathers here. So you can turn it from a picture that had to be focused at one particular depth. This was the shot that I saw in the viewfinder of the camera uh, when I took this. This is the optically formed picture. Um, and here's the final result with both uh, in focus at the same time. <laughs>